Um, I'm just going to do a very quick intro to the interface of AutoCAD. So hopefully you've had a chance to go and download uh, the free student software from Autodesk. You need to make yourself a um, Autodesk um, login to do that. Uh, so it's just the same as any other program you might expect. So you've got your normal controls, file save, open, etc. underneath the icon. And then you've got a bunch of drawing tools along here. You've got a bunch of modification tools, annotation, which is your dimensions, layers, blocks, properties, which we'll use a lot, and then a bunch of other things that we'll talk about a bit later. Down on the bottom, we then also have a bunch of really useful controls, particularly our snap settings and um, this one here, which is the way we go between model space and paper space. We don't need to talk about that yet. And unlike Rhino, it has its command line down the bottom here. So uh, just some general things. Here is the line command. So if I draw a line in here, you can see that each segment is a separate segment and if I use the polyline command it's a joined up thing. Now these are called vertices or vertex and also group edits um, in your assignment. So you've got a bit of um, control with these if you hover your mouse over them because you can add vertex, stretch vertex, remove vertex and you get slightly different controls if you hover over the sort of midpoint rectangular vertices. You can um, do things like convert to arc. This drawing that I'm using here, if I type in units, you can see that this is in meters. So one of the other nice quick ways to work in AutoCAD with lines and polylines is to click in the scene and then say how long you want that line to be having dragged out in the direction that you want. So let's say I want a 20 meter long line. In this case, I'm gonna type 20 and that's now drawn me a 20 meter long line. I can measure it using this measure tool. And it will say distance is 20. I can also use DI for distance. Ah, endpoint to endpoint, and you'll get distance is 20. Uh, so that's pretty useful. In terms of the um, tools that you might want to use next, offset is particularly useful for this assignment. So you might come in here and do an offset. It's going to ask you how far that offset's going to be. So let's say we want a two meter wide path. We can put two in and offset that path by two meters. In terms of zooming and panning, it's just the middle mouse button zooms in and out and you hold the middle mouse button down to pan. So moving on from there, we want to have a look at rotate. Um, often I just type in RO, but uh, you can also just use rotate here. Select your objects and you might want to select them. You might want to do a referenced rotate. So for your particular assignment, the referenced rotate is really useful. So if I'm rotating this way, I can just do it sort of by eyeball, I guess. But if I want to do a um, referenced rotate, I need to choose a base point, and then you'll see down here it's either a copy or a reference. I really like to use the reference, and then let's say I really want to be able to use the bottom end of this line, but the top end of this line, and I want to be able to get that top end of this line close to something. I'll just go through the snaps very quickly in this video as well. So snaps are down here under the snap cursor tool. Um, one of the things I have turned off in this particular circumstance is if you come in under object snap settings, you may find that you're drawing in AutoCAD and it's trying to dimension for you. 
I've turned off in my dynamic input. I've turned off my enable pointer input and my enable dimension input where possible. Um, you may also find that um, AutoCAD is trying to tell you about angles. So that is also under the uh, polar tracking. Uh, you can come in under the tracking settings. You could have got from it, um, you could have got to this from the other one as well, but um, I've just turned polar tracking off for the moment because I'm not after angles. All right, one more thing that I will show you in this video is just how to make a block. Uh, so um, this just makes it easier to use this as a segment of path. So let's say I've got 20 meter segments of path and I want to copy them. So I'm using CP here, but you can get to copy over here. And I'm using the endpoint and I'm moving over to here. I could rotate these around and start making my endpoints of my um, uh, line. Nobody uses line. All right, oh, actually before I show you block, I'm going to just go into the snap settings for a little bit longer. So within the snap settings, it's really important to make sure that you're using these properly. So if you come under here um, and go to your, you can see that there are all these options with your snap settings. So one of the things that you might be doing in terms of making um, your landings is you might be coming in here coming to the end point of this, hovering over it in order to pick up the end point, and then stretching out, which is giving me my extension. I'm going to do the same here, I'm hovering over it for a minute, and dragging out. Now you might ask, how long does this need to be? How am I going to deal with this? There are other things I need to do here, which are to make my line, my or my segment of my ramp. I could just stick on the um, end point, but what I'm going to do here is hold down shift, right click, and I'm going to stick on my perpendicular snap. You can see it's a different type of snap. I might do that over here as well. In this circumstance, perpendicular and end point going to be in the same place but it's not necessarily um, the case all the time but it's very important to get perpendicular um, segments of ramp so then to make your landing end you could just offset this by two meters or something that you wanted you could also do a line across from here to here and that would give you your end of your ramp. You could then use the trim command. You select the object that you're trimming to. Enter, end, end. So the way I would do this would be I would work using my layers. So I would use my layers um, command and I would set myself up a new layer to work on which might be my, uh, let's say it's called L setup lines. I'll make it current by ticking that and I'll just make it not white because white's annoying. Um, and then we can get rid of that. So I can select all of that and come in here and stick that on my L setup lines.